This week's episode is sponsored by The Soul Hub. The Soul Hub is on a mission to empower you to transform your life. We believe that if you are opened up to new ways of thinking, you can create your own reality. The cold water tubs are an easy and inexpensive way for you to experience the power of cold water therapy. Cold water therapy has changed countless lives. They hope to help you take control of your mental and physical health to connect you with who you truly are. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. Let me show you something, bro. This is what's crazy here. Yeah? I've only ever had two things in my entire life, bro, like happen to me proper in a bad way, you know, like being shot or stabbed. Mm -hmm. Cause really when I think about it, bro, a lot of the time it's been me doing something to somebody. You get what I'm saying, bro? So I've did pretty well, really, when I think about it, you get me? But you know, even though it was two times, bro, in my mind, bro, that I felt like it was 200, bro. You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it felt like, bro, like other people probably don't even remember or like, you get what I'm saying, bro? But in my mind, bro, it was like, that shit was fresh, bro. How much do you think karma plays a part? Do you think that exists? Yeah. I do, you know. What was it feeling getting shot three times? Not as bad as getting stabbed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, bro? When I got stabbed, yeah, that properly fucked me up. That's what I'm saying. But mm -hmm. see, I got stabbed nine times. I stabbed like my hands, arms, mm -hmm. arms, arms, shoulder. This one here on my neck, bro. See there. Like a couple, couple times when I got shot though, that was through my, my wrist here. Come out the other side of my wrist there. Through my stomach, come out my grind. And one through my leg, come out the other side as well. How is that for your mum? Getting shot three times when you see her the next time? Do you feel disappointment? Do you feel sad or heartbroken? Or do you still have that mentality where you don't you kinda of block it out? Hmm. Boom, we're on. Today's guest, we've got Girilla. Yeah. Grilla, known as Grilla. <laughs> How are you, big dog? I'm good, you know, bro. I'm good, man. I'm good. Yeah. Man. I've been waiting for one of these moments. You know what I'm saying? This is um Yeah, man, yeah, man. This this is this is an important moment. Yeah, you've not told your story, have you? Nah, bro. Um It's like what I was saying before, man. We come from it's a different type of era, bro. Like we didn't really talk too much, you know what I'm saying? So telling my story, bro, weren't really like an option at the time, if that makes sense. You either knew me. Well, you don't, innit? You yeah. know what I'm saying? But more time. Try to keep everything in house. It's just a new generation yeah, 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 yeah. that people are. Bro, it, I'm still, I'm still baffled, yeah. When I'm seeing certain things on the internet, you get me? Like, still new to me, like that certain things. But yeah, yeah. You've done a bit of time in prison yourself. You and your brothers, three brothers, and yeah, yeah, all been yeah. in prison. Yeah, yeah. But I always go back to the start with my guests. Where you grew up and how it all began. Well. You know what? I was born in London, you know. Where are you? I'm actually born in London, yeah. bro. King's King's College Hospital. I'm born born in London. So I, I remember I remember living in London for a little bit when I was a kid, like I was small, bro. But then I remember moving to the Middle East. So we moved straight to Qatar because I'm half Sudanese. I'm half Sudanese. So my pops is full Sudanese. You get me? Mum's born in England, Jamaican background. But we moved over there though. And then I was over there for a couple of years, bro. Went to school and, and stuff over there. Do you know what I'm saying? Life was different over there though, bro. Like, it wasn't like, it wasn't, you know, it was completely different, bro. Like, we lived in big houses. We had, because over there, it wasn't really, uh, you didn't you didn't have two floors. It was like big bungalows, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So imagine like a mansion, but all on one floor. That's how it was. We had maids and shit. Like, it was crazy still when I think about it now. But that was normal as a kid, though. You know what I'm saying? We even went private school. Like, my pops had a good job over there. 
You know what I'm saying? Like what, he. What was he doing? You know what? Oh, I can't yeah. remember exactly, bro. No. Nah, like I don't want to say. He was bringing in some yeah, paper. He, he, he worked in um, it was like some sort of printing company, but it was like some high up. You know what I'm saying? I think I had something to do with printing money and stuff. But um, my other brothers know that shit better because they remember it better being older and that. But um, you know, we was we was over there, bro, and like I saying, life was different, bro. Like there was, you know, we had beach houses, bro. Like literally, like you go there, driving on quads and shit for no reason in the fucking sand and that, bro. Like it was different living. And then, um, like, bro, I, I give you an example, yeah. Like I remember, we used to get chauffeur driven around the place, yeah. Like if we went to a shop, the people in the shop would come out to us and be like, "Yo, what do you want?" <laughs> My dad would tell them. And they'd be like, yo, they'd run back in the shop, bro, like, and just pick up all these items and come back, you get me? But like I said to me at the time as a kid, this was all just normal, though. This is all I'd kind of known and seen, you get me? So, bro, somehow, I, like, I, I don't know what happened between my mom and my pops, but I just know <laughs> we just came straight back to England and we was in Handsworth, bro. This is how I remember it anyway. What age did you come back? What, what you say? What, what year? age? What age? Where you when you come I was back? probably about, I want to say about, I reckon about eight or something, you know. So it's like in my mind, bro, if you can think of yourself when you're, when you're eight and that, like I, can, I, could, I could remember everything clearly, you know what I'm saying? So when I've come over here now, bro, I was, <laughs> yo, I was confused, bro, because we went from living in those houses to come in straight back to England, to Broome, to Handsworth, which is like one of the hoods of the most, or the, or the hoods, you know what I'm saying? To just living in a, just straight up, a, a broke down council fucking house, you get what I'm saying? What was it like going from private school to then like a council estate school? You know what's mad, bro? Put it like this here, you see, you see over there? So like a kid who's looked at as not really being too smart over there, in like say the bottom sets. That kid would come over here, bro, and be in the top sets over here. Do you know what I'm saying? The teaching you get over there, bro, is like, it's, it's different, bro. So you come, if you, you came over here, you'd go into school, you'd think everything was easy. Do you know what I'm saying? Because that's how it was for all of us. We came, bro, we was, we was advanced and we didn't realize it. You get what I'm saying? But it was a big change though, bro. It was like the way, I can't, it's just, just the attitude of everyone, it was different. You get what I'm saying? Bro, you're over there, bro. Everyone, it's, it's, everyone's moving like it's daisies and sunshine. You know what I'm saying? Came over here, bro. It was just, a, it was a different environment. You get what I'm saying? And that, you could feel that from when we was in primary school. The you negativity. Know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was like a different environment, bro. Like, it's, it's, it's different, bro. You know what I'm saying? And you understand that. Well, I understood that from then. You get what I'm saying? Like, um, but my primary school, though, a lot of, <laughs> how can I put it? Like, a lot of brand name people came out of my primary school. You get what I'm saying? And, you know, be, being on the ends, man, ye, I grew fast. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, I grew fast. Like, my brother, my older brother, he was, um, he went to, so, so I then, this is what I saw growing up. When I was growing up, I saw my brother getting into loads of fights and scraps and shit. You get me? Um, Mickey. Matter of fact, everyone on the ends called him Mad Mickey. You get me? But he, he, bro, he got into it with, it seemed like everyone at the time, you know what I'm saying? But in my brain though, yeah, it's almost like it was training me though, bro. Like in my mind, I'm, I'm seeing this and I'm thinking to myself, see my brother, though, he, he wouldn't even have realized this, you get what I'm saying? But it's like in my mind, I'm thinking, I need to hurry up and toughen up. You know what I'm saying? Did you feel pressure that you had to? Yeah, I to? felt like I felt like, yo, I that's my brother. Like, and I need to hurry up and become who I'm becoming, bro. So that these things ain't happening, bro. Not to say that he not to say he weren't handling his shit, because my brother always handled his shit, you know what I'm saying? But it's just that I don't know, bro. Like, it literally made me feel like, yo, I need to hurry up and step yeah. up. You What's know what the I'm age saying? difference with the three of you? So he's like, so one of my brothers is like a year older than me. Mickey's like 
six, seven years older than me. And he's a unit as well, man. He, he yeah, does yeah, the cage yeah, fighting yeah, and that yeah, now. He, yeah, he don't play games, man. But yeah. this is the craziest thing, yeah. That cage fighting shit you see him doing, bro. He was fucking people up like that, yeah, from ages ago, bro. It's like almost like, you know when, you know certain people go into mixed martial arts and that, bro. They go into the MMA and learn how to fight. It's almost like uh, he already knew how to do that and he just kind of channeled it into something. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Because growing up, bro, that's all he did. Are people trying to bully is coming from a different kind of well, world to then coming to council estate? <clears throat> Well, with him, yeah. See, we've our upbringings have been kind of. It's been a little bit different, bro. Cause my my brother kind of bared the brunt of like being older and kind of paving the way. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really have that pressure, bro. Like when I when I was when I got to a certain age, they already knew who I was because they know who my brother is. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So his experience was a little different. He had to kind of push through a bit more. Whereas with me. You know, I did my thing, but there, there was always the aspect of, oh, that's such and such his brother. You get what I'm saying? So, but also though, bro, I got a big family. So my mom, my mom and my dad's um, families are both big. Did you ever speak to your dad again? Yeah, 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 yeah. My pop, he, um, he came, he, he came, he came, um, you know, he's, he's, he kind of goes back and forth. You get what I'm saying? But, um, you know, we always we, we we always been cool though. We always been cool. There's been little, you know, there's been spaces where ain't we ain't, you know we ain't seen him for you know a couple years here and there. But in the recent years, he's more stuck around. Did you ever question that at the time coming from like it's totally night and day from going from private school to then that? Did you ever question him over it? Why? You know the maddest thing is, bro. Nah, not really. You know, I can't. You know. I, you know, the more I got older though, yeah, is the more like I had these questions. But really, I didn't um I didn't really ask this when I was growing up though. I felt more like um that's that's grown people shit at the time, you know what I'm saying? Like that's my parents' shit. Like I ain't really I don't know, bruv. But now I'm older though, yeah. There's I have oh, a million and one questions, bro. I look back and I think, hold on a minute. Wait there, if we was doing that, why we end up doing this? Like, you know what I'm saying? All the questions come now when I'm older. But when I was younger, bro, I kind of just put that to the back of my mind, like, yo, fuck it. Just yeah, because of going for a private school, there's op more opportunities, not necessarily, are you going to be a better kid? Yeah. I know plenty of people went from private school that are more fucked up in cocaine than people who I grew up from in the streets. It's, um, but it's the opportunities it can present themselves with to go to one school, yeah, to yeah. then go into that. Did you struggle once you went to secondary school? Once Was your accent that different? Yeah, first of all, everyone used to tell us that we sound American. And we was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, bro, you don't <laughs> fucking sound American, yeah. bro. And, but but the, well, everyone used to tell me and my brothers like, yo, how come you guys sound like that? And we're thinking, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? But, and you see our work and stuff. This is what I'm saying. When it came to the classwork though, bro, it literally seemed like it was giving us like easy work on purpose or something. At years ahead you know of your time then? We was ahead, bro. My, my brother, Mickey, bro. That, don't let his fucking, him doing MMA fool you, bro. My brother is like, and, and my next brother too, yeah? But you see Mickey though, bro. This geezer is like super fucking smart, bro. Like this geezer is like, bro, the amount of qualifications and, <laughs> bro, like I swear down, you wouldn't expect it. Mm -hmm. you know what so I'm how does free well educated kids then all end up in prison? Psh, this is what I'm saying, bro. It's mad because if you know what we're capable of, yeah, it, it doesn't make sense. But then at the same time, bro, circumstance. The environment. You get what I'm saying, yeah? So you see like the way I'm telling you, I come from a big family in it. So my dad's side of the family is big. He's got like 10 brothers or some shit. You get what I'm saying? Same with my mom's side. But you know, I could literally tell you, bro, like one of my uncles right now in the same house, bro, there's like 11 of them. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so if you think of this, bro, and then go down the chain, and I ain't talking about second cousin or rare, rare. Those are like immediates, you get what I'm saying, bro? Like, so coming up now, I was able to just roll with my family members. Do you get what I'm saying? Because they was older than me. I'm one of the youngest out of my cousins. So they was already doing what they were doing. So it's kind of like, I was able to just come around and kind of pick things up. But I picked it up very fast though. You get what I'm saying? 
And you know, at one point in my in my brain, bro, like I remember, I remember seeing like my older my older cousins and stuff, yeah, with like whether it was whether it was jewelry, money, whatever it was, bro. And I literally, I remember thinking to myself, yo, that's what I want, like that's what I want. All that other shit went out the window, bro. Of like, you know, when you're thinking about, yo, we'll get this grade, get this to that. I just looked and thought, that's what I want. You know what I'm saying? They, you know, it looks like, you know, you, you, you're you trying to get these qualifications or whatnot so that you can build up to a stage to get that shit. But bro, they've already got it. So like, I want that. You know what I'm saying? That's that's how my mind seen it at the time. You get me? Mm-hmm. And um, it's like, every time, it's, it's almost like every time I sin something, bro, I was just feeling like, yo, that's what I'm on. Every time I seen something that was almost like past that next level, you know what I'm saying? I felt like, yo, that's what I want yeah. to do. When did you start getting into early for crime? Young, bro. Like, you know, because at first you're doing things and you don't even look at it like it's crime. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, you're just doing, you just, you're just doing what you're doing with, you, with, you, with your friends or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But it, it, it was... You know, when I was younger, bro, I would hear I would be playing outside, yeah, and I'd hear like um, I'd see like brand name people go by, go by. You get what I'm saying? So from I was about, I say about fourteen or something, bro, fame fourteen. Like my brothers were already doing what they were doing. I was already seeing things. You get what I'm saying, bro? So I'd say from about from about about fourteen, I was already like. I was I was on the road. From about fifteen though, I was like on the road though. Like, do you get what I'm saying? Fourteen was like, all right, do you know what I'm saying? I'm around certain older man and that's what I'm saying. Even now when I'm thinking about it, bro, fourteen and the peeps I was around though were way older though, bro. Like mm-hmm. but by the time I was fifteen, bro, like I was out there, bro. Like proper active. Like like out there, bro. When was the first time you got to jail? I went to jail when I was you know, I was kind of late to go to jail still, to be fair. I kind of did, I did pretty well, you know, bro. Cause I kept, I feel like every time I went to court, yeah, to Crown Court, I'd bust case. <laughs> and I ain't gonna lie, bro. It's like, in my mind, yeah, I started feeling like, yo, I just bust case. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I always bust case, bro. That, yeah. I started to really feel like, I'm not even gonna chat shit. I really started to feel like that, bro. And then, when uh, reality hits, you know what I'm saying, bro? Because on this occasion, it's like, even though, I knew how the seriousness of the scenario, it's like I still thought in my mind, yeah, nah, <laughs> like I'll, I'll bust that. You get me? <laughs> <laughs> like I still thought yeah. that, bro, and I didn't bust it. Like, yeah. I tell you what, I think um, I think when I went to court and they were like, yeah, obviously remand. I think then it was like, hmm, all right, this one might be going a bit different. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then obviously, but to be fair, bro, when I got, when I got bagged, yeah. What'd you get done with firearms? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what was your sentence? Five years? Yeah, so I got a five year. Mm-hmm. And bro, yo, you don't so check so check this out. So the way I got the way I got nabbed, yeah. I'm in like I'm in this I'm in a car, bro. And I fucking Bro, I've fallen asleep with this with this thing on me. You get what I'm saying? And then I've I've basically woke up to police around the car, but imagine when they've come around the car, it's like, it's like, they they I, they didn't come for what they got. You get what I'm saying, bro? They came for, they came for like, um, I think they thought we was like selling drugs or some shit, yeah? But either way, they were coming to the car, but it just wasn't for that. You get what I'm saying? So, when he's come to the, when he's come to the whip, um, it's only like two of them at this point, you get what I'm saying? I've woke up, bro. Joking, but anyway, I've woke up, bro, and I've seen I've seen this um, the Fed guy at the window, and I'm thinking to myself, "Yo, what the fuck?" It's like you know, for a second, you know, when you have to gather your thoughts for a second when you just wake up, mm-hmm. and I've looked around, bro, and I'm thinking, "Hold on a minute." Now my brethren who's beside me now, cause just me and my brethren in the car. You know, <laughs> in my mind, like as soon as I wake up and I clock them, I'm thinking, "How the fuck?" How like? Why didn't you wake me up from earlier or something? Like when they were pulling it out, the way the road was, yeah, and where they've pulled from, it's like he could have woke me up from a bit earlier. That's what I thought in my mind at the time, you get me? But then 
this um you know the guys um you know they pull their um you know fucking bullshit card they always pull you know what i'm saying i can smell weed and that you know what i'm saying the whip no one weren't smoking but obviously what the fuck can you say once to draw that card you know what i'm saying bro so then it was so then it was um it turned from that to you know can you just step out the car and give you a quick pat down you get what i'm saying now to be fair bro they weren't going on they weren't going on too bad but in my mind though i'm thinking you can't pat me down bro you know, if you pat me down, bro. This is this is this is about to go left. You get what I'm saying? So I get out of the car. My man goes to uh, pat me down, bro. And y'all just took off, bro. I said, "You fuck this, bro." Like you're gonna have to. I'm not just fucking. Like, what am I gonna do, bro? Stir and say, "Hey, just one second, here you go." <laughs> like, what am I gonna do, bro? Like, you know what I'm saying? I said, "Fuck this." So. I've I've just cut. I start running. To be fair, bro, I kind of dusted them. You know what I'm saying? I can kind of move for a big guy. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I rip, dip around the corner. I fucking um. Went, by the time you see, because where we was, yeah, it was like a um, it wasn't on the main road. But by the time I turn the corner, we go onto a main road. So you're talking like like there's buses and shit going past, and I'm I'm just cutting, cutting, cutting. As I turn now, yeah, I turn, I take this, because imagine this, yeah, it's like, imagine if you had on your jumper and you put on a pouch, then you put your coat on. That's like how I had it on. So it was almost like a holster. You get what I'm saying? Like, I just rock it like that. So it was just quick. You know what I'm saying, bro? But on this occasion, yeah, it made it fucking harder. You get what I'm saying? Because I'm running, I'm having to try and unzip my coat and then take this thing out. By the, but I managed to do it though. And then I throw it. And then I cut around a couple more corners. By the time I cut around these corners, I'm thinking I'm nice. You know, I stop running. I walk down the road a bit. You know, by this time, they kind of catch up with me. And they're like, yo, what are you running for? I'm saying to the guy, well, you, you know, I, I thought I had a warrant out for my arrest. I don't want to get in trouble. So right now, I'm just, I'm just running in it. You know what I'm saying? He's like, all right, all right, all right. Well, stay here. Don't do that again. But in his mind, bro, it's like he was more just pissed that I ran. You get what I'm saying? Rather than him thinking I've run because of something big. You get what I'm saying, bro? Yeah. That's how his attitude was. It was like a young kind of geezer, you get me? It's like he was just looking at me like, yo, bro, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I'm standing there now, bro. The van pulls up. Because by this time, like loads of feds have just come from fuck knows where, you get me? The van pulls up. They put me on the van. But when they put me on the van, though, bro, it's almost like... They're just doing their, you know, when they're filling out their, the, the fucking form bullshit, bro, to give you whatever. And they're just holding me there, you get me? As they're holding me there, bro, you know, I'm looking out this window. I just start seeing the activity just move a bit more, just move faster. Something faster. wasn't right. Just Somewhere I'm right, bro. I'm seeing the way the feds are moving. Yeah. They, you know, I'm looking out the window, bro. I'm like, nah, I don't think I fingered this, but something's not right. Mind you, a second ago, I thought I was blessed. You know what I'm saying? Where up the way I threw it, you get me? So... Turns out, bro, they found the thing. You know what I'm saying? Someone stuck you in. Bro, imagine this. So in my mind, I'm thinking, there's no way, bro. Like, how the fuck did they just find that? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if they do, I'm thinking, cool, though. Because, you know, you're going to have to prove that in A, B, and C. And da, 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 da. That's how I'm thinking at the time. You get me? I'll come to find out afterwards, though, bro, that some random fucking geezer, bro, driving past has fucking seen me do this, bro. Dickhead, good Samaritan type of motherfucker has jumped out, bro. Gone to the feds for no fucking reason and said, yo, my man just did this. Just some random guy, bro. Like, he didn't get no fucking money for that or anything, bro. He just jumped out and just did that, kept his day moving. You get me? Then I got back, bro. You got what I'm saying? But to be fair, I knew I weren't really going to be able to boss it, though, because... Fingerprints? Yeah, bro. I was, it was heat at the moment, innit? You got what I'm saying, bro? So I had, like, I just had to do what I was doing at the time. Yeah. I could, it's not like I could run and then put my, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying, yeah, bro? Yeah. It was just quick movement. But. What kind of gun? It was a four or five, you know. Mm -hmm. So. That's a powerful gun. That's what I'm saying, bro. You carry that every day? That's how it was. So, yeah. to be fair, to be fair, not that one every day. It was, see, that, long story, Yeah. basically. <laughs> but, 
that one is what I had on me that day. What was it like then getting a five stretch with your two brothers being in jail? What was your mum thinking? Her third son going to prison. Well, is that tough on your mum? You know, that's that's it's mad, bro. Because I only think of these things like now. Mm-hmm. I didn't think of this when I was younger, bro. Like when we were doing what we were doing, bro. It's like you kind of got a selfish mentality in it, and you don't even really. It's like a selfish mentality by accident. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, bro. Like. You're just living for you, doing what I you're doing. you try doing. and block it out because, you know, everybody knows when they do right from wrong, no matter who they are. You get so, what I'm saying? Yeah, when you're in that life, you don't want to think about anybody else's consequences. This but everything has that effect where it damages everybody that's around you also who care for you. Yeah, facts. And you know the thing is, bro, you know, with my family, yeah, we're growing up with, like, proper like morals and principles, you get what I'm saying, G? So, like, what you're saying is right. Like, we definitely understand, you get what I'm saying, bro, but... It's the circumstance though, bro. You know what I'm saying? When you when you're in a certain kind of environment, bro, it's it's hard to not be see, let me show you something. You know, it could you know how many people I know, bro, where they've got into this because they was just doing them and then something's happened to them and then they're thinking, yo, fuck that. Do you know what I'm saying? Like something's happened to them for no reason and then they thought, yo, fuck that. Now I'm gonna do A, B, and C. Now before they know it, bro, now they're in this. You get what I'm saying? That's not quite how it happened with me, but I'm saying that's how easy it is, bro. Mm-hmm. Like the environment, bro. It's a, it's mad still. But when I got when I got locked though, bro, I got crazy lucky though because, like you say, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. We know a four or five is a powerful gun, bro. Mm-hmm. But on this occasion, this thing was this was fully loaded, bro. One in the head. You get what I'm saying? And um. Do you think you would have used that? You know what, bro? So I had, you know what? I had that with me, yeah. That was like not too long after after I got shot. So I got shot. And then, you know, it's, it, again, bro, circumstance. You get know what I'm saying? How many times did you get shot? I got shot three times. So one occasion, three times. What age were you then? About 21, 22. So still young, but you had this for kind of protection because it's kind of, not ride or die, but kill or be killed mentality. Well, around that time period, it was something like that. You get what I'm saying? It's like, because... You know, no one wants to be on that receiving end, bro. You get what I'm saying? Like, and especially, especially if you felt that, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's been stabbed, been shot, you know, you ain't trying to have that happen again. Do you get what I'm saying? And this is this is the part, yeah, that 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 always gets me. When I hear people talking about, oh, yo, these younger youths are stupid, or they're trying to talk down on the younger on the younger youths, talking about, yo, you know, they're carrying a knife or carrying this. And I'm like, bro, you need to put yourself in their shoes for a second, you know, bro. Like, you're looking at it like he's just stepping out. Nine times out of 10, bro, none, those kids ain't even on that, bro. But in their mind, they're thinking, yo, I got a friend, you know, who got, who got killed or something. I'm going to just keep this with me for just in case, if anything. You get what I'm saying, bro? And... That usually that that can spiral sometimes, you get me? But but a lot of time, bro, you know what I'm saying? A person's a person's thinking to themselves, I ain't just, I ain't trying to be on the receiving end. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I know in my mind that that's happened. Cause see, I've been stabbed and shot. You get what I'm saying? When I was when I was stabbed, I was even younger though. I was like, I'll be real with you, bro. You know, getting shot did you know when I got stabbed, that's that more turned me into a monster, bro. Like when I got stabbed. You get Where me? did you get stabbed? Where? Yeah. So I was in the city centre. So check it. My brother was rolling with some kids, yeah? The kids who my brother was rolling with, well, rolling with, chatted to, however you want to put it, you get me. They all went to the same college and shit. They were cool, basically, you get me. Some little argument happened with them. My brother ends up getting into a scrap. Now, the scrap that they get into, my other brother ends up, you know, jumping in and they end up beating up these youths, you get me? It was a minor, it weren't really no big deal, bro. A week later now, I see the same, like, you know, same set of men. And then it goes off. But when it goes off, yeah, 
you know, in my mind, it's just a scrap. You know, it's just a big scrap. But by the end of the scrap, you know, I'm realizing I've been stabbed. Because what it is now, imagine, um, imagine the archway of a bus. So this kid's standing in the archway. So we end up having this scrap, bro. And then at the end of it, because I went onto the bus, at the end of it, I come off the bus. You know what I'm saying? Still walking on my feet, everything. I'm feeling like I'm cool. Like I ain't even been hitting my face, nothing. You know what I'm saying? I'm feeling cool. Then it's when I turn, I realize, raw, there's loads of blood coming from my neck. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, wait there. But I thought the blood was coming from my hand because I had on a set of gloves here and I, and I noticed there was a tear in the glove. So I thought I caught my hand on something. So I take the glove off and I see my hands bleeding and I'm like, yo, I'm saying to my brothers in that, I think it's just my hand. When I turn my neck, bro, it's like a movie, fam. The way the blood shot across the road, bro. Like, this, bro, it, it reached like meters, bro. Like, it was like a film. What you see on the films, that shit happens like that. You get what I'm saying? The blood went far, bro. But it's like I didn't panic, though. It's like when it happened, I just remember thinking to myself, yo, just be calm. You know what I'm saying? Because I saw how much blood came out of my neck, bro. And I just thought, yo, just be calm. Probably saved your life. You get what I'm saying? So my brother's, my brother, you know, he kind of just placed me on the floor. You get me? To just make sure I was cool and that. You know, I see a fucking, there's like a woman and that with a fucking mobile phone in my face, bro. I was like, yo, get the fucking phone out of my face. Like call the ambulance or some shit. He there with the phone in my face. And then um, my other brother's come out, come, come from nowhere, bro. I don't even know where the fuck he came from. So I can see, so I'm laying on the floor, but I can see my bros. You get what I'm saying? Like I can see both of them. And then uh, imagine I'm flying, to, uh, you know, I'm flying to the hospital in this ambulance now, bro. And, you know, this geezer's trying to keep me awake and that, you know what I'm saying? By the time I get there now, bro, um, there's a couple doctors around, yeah? And there's just, I remember this one Chinese guy, though, and he said, well, I think he's Chinese, you know what I mean? But my man's come around now and he said to me, yo, I'm going to put you to sleep. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking to myself, all right, cool. I'm expecting like something to go over my face. But I shit you not, bro. This geezer put his, his fingers on my throat, bro, and just put me to sleep, fam. I don't know. I don't know what type of technique that was, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this geezer put me to sleep, bro. And I, I woke up in some some dark ass room, bro, thinking, what the fuck? I could hear people breathing off fucks, bro. I come to find out that was like some room where basically people go when they think he's gonna fucking die or some shit. You get me? So I wake up in this room, like, what the fuck is going on here, bro? The the nurse comes, you know what I'm saying? When this when this nurse comes over, bro, I'm saying to her, yo, it's like she got scared when she seen me awake, like she didn't expect me to wake up or something. So she's all panicking, bro, running around. I'm saying to her, yo, I need a drink. Because I could feel the roof of my mouth, bro, hanging. It's like it's like they tried to put something, you know, like down my throat or something, the doctors or whatever. And it's like they took the roof of my mouth, bro. I could feel it flapping like a fucking dog flap, bro. You get me? So this woman saying that, yo, I can't give you a glass of water. She came over, bro. She she went out of the room. She came back with like a like a wet fucking sponge, bro. And fucking, bro, <laughs> had to just suck the sponge. You get me? Because the way, it's like, it's like when I woke up, bro, I can't explain the first, bro. It was, it was crazy. But anyway, after that, bro, I was probably in that hospital for about six days. Then I discharged myself. You get me? Because the hygiene was fucked in there. But I discharged myself. And you know what, bro? I was pretty fucked, you know? Like, I was fucked, bro, but my attitude, you wouldn't really have known I was fucked, bro, because I still was me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And if anything, it made me, it's like, it's like, bro, if peeps only knew, yeah, how fucked I was, yeah, they could have just seen me, bro, and like pushed me in my forehead and I would have mm -hmm. fell over, bro, you know what I'm saying? How does that heighten your paranoia? How does that heighten, like, your, your surroundings when... It's, you're close to death, and she's probably millimeters from death. When you come out, what is your mindset? How's your head? What are you thinking? Is it I'm carrying a piece? That shit to... fucked me up, bro. Like yeah. I tell you what, yeah, my paranoia went on ten, bro. It's still there. It's not yeah. even. It's, that's not. Even, that's not a thing where it's come and gone, bro. Like that's that is what it is, bro. The craziest thing though, it's like, bro. It's like a love hate thing though. It's like a. It's like I hate it, but at the same time, bro, I don't know if I change it. Mm -hmm. Sounds sounds weird, isn't it? But it's like, yo, I don't know if I change it though, bro, because why would I change it if I've actually experienced that, bro? And it's, do you, you know what I'm saying, yeah. bro? Do you know the kid who stabbed you? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. But was that a tough war? Was that kind of gang thing? It's mad, bro, because it looked like it was. It looked like it was, but it wasn't. You know, it looked like it was easy to look like that because he was from one side of town and I'm from one side of town. You get what I'm saying? But really, bro, who knows the actual situation? It actually wasn't that, but it looked like that though. Mm -hmm. Plus, it kind of didn't help because fucking I was on a mad one after that, bro. Like after that, my bro, my mind was just like, yo, man. I started, bro. You know, you know. I started really thinking to myself, bro, like, hold on a minute. So, like, this would have just been cool if I weren't here no more. <laughs> nah. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, like, I felt like I ain't going to be the one, you know, bro, whose name is like, I'm the, uh, the victim. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, I ain't the victim. So, I always felt like if something happens to me, bro, what you need to remember in this scenario is what happened <laughs> to the other person. You get what I'm saying, bro? So every time I've ever been, every time I've, I've, I've you know, been in a scenario before, bro, like this is, it's, it's that war mentality. You get what I'm saying, bro? Like, like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not losing. This is, this is, this is, this, bro, it's, it's fucked, it's fucked still. Because when I'm saying all of this, bro, it sounds fucked, but it's the reality, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, this is really, bro, the mind frames that develop, bro, like, like, that's how you see everything. How much does that dent the pride? Knowing that something's happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, bro. The man of your stature, your brother's big boy, fucking, you feel untouchable, walking away from court cases. It's the ones who feel untouchable. That shit. That's the you, ones bro. who get fucking. Let me show you something, bro. This is what's crazy. Yeah? I've only ever had two things in my entire life, bro, like happen to me proper in a bad way. You know, like being shot or stabbed. Because mm -hmm. really when I think about it, bro, a lot of the time it's been me doing something to somebody. You get what I'm saying, bro? So I've did pretty well, really, when I think about it. You get me? But you know, even though it was two times, bro, in my mind, bro, that I felt like it was 200, bro. Do you, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it felt like, bro, like, other people probably don't even remember or like, you know what I'm saying, bro? But in my mind, bro, it was like, that shit was fresh, bro. How much do you think karma plays a part? Do you think that exists? Yeah. I do, you know. You know, that, that that's what I'm saying, you know. The way I look on things is a bit different now. But when I was younger, I didn't really... I didn't really give a fuck about that, you know, bro. But I got older and I'm like, you know what, bro? You see, I've seen too much stuff happen to people, bro, around me to not think that that's a thing. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I know people, bro, who, who've done the worst shit, bro. And you you thought there was getting, you know what I'm saying? And then down the line, bro, something ends up- Catching up with them. Catching up, bro. What was it feeling getting shot three times? Not as bad as getting stabbed, you know, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, bro? When I got stabbed, yeah, that properly fucked me up. That's what I'm saying. But mm -hmm. see, I got stabbed nine times. I got stabbed like my hands, arms, mm -hmm. arms, arms, shoulder. This one here on my neck, bro. See there. Like a couple, couple times when I got shot, though, that was through my, my wrist here. Come out the other side of my wrist there, through my stomach, come out my grind. And one through my leg, come out the other side as well. Close range? Very close, bro. Yeah, it must have been there. Like, um, a bit further than me and you. Like, probably probably literally not, not, not to that door, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, proper close, like proper close. That's a mad scenario too, though. That was a mad scenario too, bro. The um, so like even with that there though, bro. That was like um, you know, cause I got shot. I got shot in a club. I was in a club, bro. Like, but the maddest thing with that though, that's what I'm saying, bro. That was that was a mad scenario as well, yeah. Cause the kid who shot me, bro, like, we 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 had had a. 
we had an altercation before, you get me? Like, but you're talking like a while ago though, so like maybe a year and a half before that, before me getting shot, you know what I'm saying? But then, but then, so imagine, and this is the, you know, the craziest thing about this, bro. Me and this kid, yeah, we were cool, you know, bro. Like we were mad cool, but this is why the hood's fucked up though. You know what I'm saying? Because no you'd be, yeah. you be cool with someone, bro, and shit just changes, bro. You get what I'm saying? And everyone's in house. You get what I'm saying? So we were cool, bro. Once upon a time, bro, we were rolling in that. Like, we were cool, bro. And then, and then a dickhead altercation happened in one, in one, uh, in, 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 in one club. It was a minor, you know, proper minor, bro. Like, I must have been, um, where, which club was this now? I can't remember the name of the place, you know, bro. I'm trying to remember the name of it, but I can't remember the name of it. But anyway, I'm in this place now, yeah? Going to the bathroom. There's a couple peeps chilling all by the fucking, you know, like by the stores where you're going to piss. So I'm like, yo, excuse. When I ask the youth to excuse in that now, though, it's almost like, uh, it's like you got gassed up, though, bro. Like, because on any other day, bro, we would have been cool. But on this day, he must have had this this on him. So like, I don't know. He's got like powers this day or something. You get me? So, you know, I'm only going in there to take a piss, bro. Like, I don't know why we all chilling in here. Like, I've gone in there to take a piss. I take a piss when I'm coming out. You know, I was like, yo, what are you saying? You know, you cool. Mind you, this ain't someone who ever would have spoke to me like this before. You know what I'm saying? But on this occasion, the way he's... Yo, you're cool. That's not like asking me if I'm cool, bro. That's like, like, yo, what you saying? You, do you get me? Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking, eh? So anyway, me and him have a little back and forth, but ain't nothing major though. It's, you know, we're cool still. By the time I leave the bathroom, we still cool. I end up in the corridor now, me and my bro's couple of cousins. Boom, a group of them come out. Like, yo, come. Let's speak outside. So I'm like, eh? Come then. We all know each other. You know what I'm saying? So we go outside. We're talking. So when we're talking now, um, one of his boys is talking shit. But his boy is talking shit though, when me and him are actually talking cool. You get what I'm saying? So my bro hears him talking shit. So when my bro hears him talking shit now, no, sorry, wait there, I skipped a bit. Me and the kid go across the road. Now my bro hears his friend talking shit. When he hears him talking shit, he's like, yo, fuck this. Obviously, you know, Coming from where we come from, bro, you don't wait too long before you act. You know what I'm saying, bro? Because that can be the difference between fucking... Like you felt there? Yeah, bro. So it's like the moment you're onto something, it's kind of like, fuck it, innit? You know what I'm saying? So that's how my bro was. So it must have, um, you know, them them two have started going at it. My brother's, um, you know, fucking him up and that. The other kid goes to join in. When he goes to join in now, um, I spot him going to join in. So I'm like, you know, I go towards my man, he runs off. When he runs off on my back's turn, bro, I just hear, bow, 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 shots start going off. I'm like, wait there. But this is like right behind my head though. So I turn around now. When I turn around, bro, I see the you slapping shots. Like, it's like he's shooting after my bro, yeah? But he's dizzy though because he's been getting punched up in his face. So when he stands up and tries to let this go, he's literally stumbling, but letting it go. You get what I'm saying? So I run over to this kid and I basically just grip him, bro. Dash him to the floor, take the burner off him. I was f- fuck him up, you know what I'm saying? I take this burner off him, but see where we was though, bro. I was even surprised that he did that though. Because where we was, bro, you wouldn't have really expected that, but then again, in Broome, shit goes down anywhere, bro. Yeah, that's right. So, man. yeah, like, shit goes down anywhere, bro. But when that's happened, you know, like I said, everyone who was actually there at the place, bro, we all know each other. So even when it's happened and peeps have seen me take the thing off him, it's a thing where enough peeps have run over to saying, yo, 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 just come, 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 come. Just, you know, get off, obviously, feds, da, 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 whatever it is, you get me? So, me and my bro, obviously, Take the thing off him, we cut, you know what I'm saying? Before police and that all comes, because you can already hear the sirens in that, bro. Like, because this is happening in the town centre, yeah. There's fucking um, 
Police station is in the town center, bro. It's like literally around the corner. You know what I'm saying? So this took not long at all, bro, for them to come. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, gunshots like, are talking seconds, minutes, two minutes. They, you heard them them fucking Arms sirens, bro. That was fast, bro. So we got off. By the time we were getting off, bro, we saw the, them driving past. You know what I'm saying? So that scenario there, though, bro, it was mad because... And this is why I say, yeah, the hood is fucked because it's like you can't really trust no one, bro, unless they're like your family members or some shit. And even then, bro, you know what I'm saying? But on this scenario, bro, why this was so fucked up was, you see, when this happened, we all understood, yo, this is in-house. So this ain't really going to make sense, bro. So we called, it was like a little meeting, we called, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, we got together, some grown shit, and we just knew, yo, this don't make sense. You're there, we're here. This ain't going to make sense, you know what I'm saying? So... Let's just say what we got to say now. Everyone get their peace out. And let's just, you know. Blow over. Let's squash this. Keep it calm. No one don't have to, you know, feel like they need to continue anything. Retaliate revenge. We ain't saying we about to be besties. But mm -hmm. just you do your thing, I'll do my thing. Because this is this not going to make sense. Like you get what I'm saying? But then, the craziest thing is, I'm seeing the same person in... Um, in fucking, I'm seeing the same person in, in house parties, bro. This place, that place, that place. And then before you know it, it's been about a year and a half. You know what I'm saying? And the craziest thing is I'm at one, um, I'm at a party. When I'm at this party now, bro, I clock him come in. When he comes in, bro, it's like a scene out of fucking, what's that? That's that movie, City of God. You watch that? Yeah. You seen that bit where he gets shot in the party? Mm -hmm where he tries to shoot him through crowd. Yeah. So it's like, bro, imagine, this is how much my head is on point. I see the kid, yeah. It's been a year and a half, you know, bro. We squashed the thing. I see this, I see the kid, bro. And when I see him, something don't seem right, bro. My intuition, like, Feel the energy. this is all coming to me, bro. And I'm and I'm standing there in the, in the place here. And something said, don't stand here. You, you know what I'm saying? So I move. I stand at the next place. I think to myself, let me see if this is just my brain playing with me for a second. You get what I'm saying? So I stand somewhere else. I notice I'm kind of move, not to where I am, you know, but it's always in that kind of opposite of where I am. You get it? So I'm looking over now and I'm thinking, nah, this don't seem right. So I come out of the place. I tell my, I tell my people, yo, give me a minute. I go out and obviously I, I, I go out and I get what I'm getting. Do you get what I'm saying? Now I come back in, like, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's see, let's see, you know, what happens now then. So when I go in there, bro, it's almost like when I've come back in though, you know, being being from the hood, bro, I'm not the only one who can clock things. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like it was clocked, it was gone, he's come back. You know what I'm saying? Let's just, let's allow it for tonight. You know what I'm saying? But the craziest thing is the next, the very next time I saw him, bro, the very next time, yeah. We're going, to, we're going to this party. Mind you, this isn't a type of party I would usually go to, bro. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, there's certain type of places I don't go, bro. And this was like, this was one of them, bro. And imagine I've said to myself, if I go there, we're only going to go there for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? We're going to pass through there, show our faces, then we're keeping it moving. Bro, I, it's like on this night, bro, I went against all my usual things I would do, bro. Like, so, you know, no one, no one had anything on them. You get what I'm saying? Because the car we was in had no insurance. So I remember saying to him, I remember saying, yo, everybody make sure everyone's just nice and clean because the car's got no insurance. Ain't going to make sense. There's a good chance we can get pulled. You get what I'm saying? So it weren't making no sense us moving like that. So when we've gone to this place, bro, it was definitely... Just to in, show your face and come out. Bro, I've gone in there, yeah. Man, I saw two females, bro. Fucking couple people I knew and I fucking forgot about my whole fucking... Surroundings. All my rules and shit, bro. You got what I'm saying? And, and before I knew it, an hour or two had passed. I see a kid, yeah, who I know rolls close with him. You got what I'm saying? The kid comes over to me and we're chilling. But when we're chilling, bro, I'm saying in my mind... Nah, you know what I'm saying? The kid fucks off for about a minute, comes back, he's talking to me again. When he's talking to me, bro, now everything, it really starts kicking in now. Like, yo, 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 listen, keep it moving, man. So I'm saying this to myself, 
So as I decide, all right, you know, cool, I'm going to fuck off now and keep it moving. I start walking back towards, you know, because it's one way in, one way out. When I go back towards there, bro, boom, who do I see coming in? Same kid. There, no one, he ain't coming into party, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, not in that attire. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They ain't coming to party, bro. So when they've come through, bro, must have stood, must, must have come in about 30 seconds or something, bro. Well, he did what he's meant to do, to be honest with you, bro. It's more me who didn't. You get what I'm saying? Because I, I let all my, my fucking, my guards down, bro. You know what I'm saying? Whether it was the time frame or whether it was me thinking to myself, yo, just pass in here and then leave or whatever it is, bro. I was completely off point that night. You get what I'm saying? And that's the very first thing that came in my mind when I got shot was dickhead. Yo, you was off point today. You know what I'm saying? Not like I deserved it, but like, you know, that's kind of, that, that's what fucking happens, bro, when you're off point. You get what I'm saying? So when I'm standing up in the corridor, bro, you know, I just feel, I feel my arm get knocked back. This felt like a fucking bowling ball hit my arm, bro. Like it blew my arm back. You get what I'm saying? So my hands hit the wall. And this is before I can kind of figure out what's just happened. So my arm hits the wall and I'm like, wait there. And then, you know what? I didn't feel the rest of them. I just... You just, I'm just hearing the shots coming towards me. You get me? This one, I completely felt. The rest of them, not a clue, bro. You get what I'm saying? So I get out. I, I, um, I come out of the place now. Because the way it happened, bro, it's like everyone started scattering immediately. You get what I'm saying? But I know what's going on, though. You get what I'm saying? Like, I know. No, 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 no. It's my man's trying to shoot me. You get me? So I come out. When I dip out now, I see someone, bro. And this person that I see, bro, they don't even know I've been shot from. Like they see me and tell a lie. Before I saw them, bro, I saw a girl who I didn't know her, but I recognized her. And I said to her, yo, give me a lift. This girl looked at me and said, no, bro. Yo, she said, no, actually. But with her, I actually told her what happened. She looked at me, bro, and this girl was like, nah. Bro, I, that blew my mind for a second though. Cause I was like, what? I thought the moment I said that, bro, she's gonna be like, yeah, jump in. You get me? But anyway. I see another kid that I know though. Yeah, like we know each other well. This kid pulls up, bro. And I say to him, yo, give me a lift down the road by the hospital. But he doesn't know I'm going to the hospital. He just says it casual. Yeah, come jump in. I jump in the car with him, bro. We go to the hospital. And, you know, I just jump back out, bro. Like it's a normal day. Yo, cool, cool, cool. But mind you, I can feel my stomach burning now, bro. Like I thought I got shot this way. I thought it come this way and come out my back here. Yeah? But... Obviously, it was sideways, you get me? So by the time I got to the hospital, brother, I jumped out. I say to the woman, yo, look, don't make a big scene. But obviously, you know, I've been shot very rare. Yo, she made a big scene immediately, bro. Like, buzzers going off and all that shit. But I was calm, though. Even though it sounds bad, bro, like I was raw, I was cool. You know what I'm saying? Because they were all just in and out. I discharged myself after like a day or something, bro. Um, No, I was in there for a couple of hours. Sorry, it wasn't a day, bro. I was in there for a couple of hours. They cleaned up the things and then I was like, yo, I'm cool, you know, I'm bouncing. I came out of there so fast that when people saw me, they were like, yo, I heard one crazy thing that happened, but nah, it couldn't have happened though. Like, you know what I'm saying? They seeing me, bro. And because I'm just back out there the very next day, bro, they're like, that couldn't have happened to you just now. Mm -hmm. You get me? <laughs> and for the most part, when people were saying that, I weren't even correcting them. I was just like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But these times I did get shot the day before. What was that like? Being back on the road. Yeah. Well. How does the fuck from being stabbed nine times to then being shot three times at still a young age? Are you thinking, okay, man, I need to really change my life here? Because the man you are, you're 20 stone, 21 stone. So if I think you're coming after me, yeah, you're the kind of guy that, okay, I need to kill him. Do you know what I mean? It's not as if <laughs> I'm not going to take you a square go. Nobody's going to say, right, okay, Mark, let's go yeah, yeah, for a yeah, straightener. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're too fucking yeah, big and too powerful. So some days, if you've got a problem with someone, they've got to be bold enough to fucking end yeah, your yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, facts, bro. And you know, you know, you know, it's funny, funny though, you know, because growing up, bro, I only got into issues with people who were older than me, you know. Like I always, bro, if I was like 16 getting into getting into things, yeah, with people who were like in their 30s, 20s, and they're finding out how old I am later, bro, and then being like, 
being like, what? Like they feel bad or something. Like, mm. bro, I didn't know. To me, I'm think. To me, when I was growing up, though, bro, I didn't, I didn't give a fuck, bro. Like, like when that happened, bro. Like I said, when I got stabbed, bro, that, you know, certain people stuff happens to them. Like I got a friend who got shot in his um, hamstring when we were about seventeen. He came off the road immediately, bro. He changed his number. I didn't give none of us, and bro, we never heard from him again. <laughs> you yeah. get me? You can understand that. Yeah. Now it either does that to you, bro. Oh, I feel like it does the exact opposite. Makes you more violent. You get what I'm saying, bro? Revenge. To me, bro, I, I literally had in my head, I'll never be that guy, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, you couldn't, you, you can't do that to me, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's why I've always moved in, in a certain kind of way. I carry myself a certain kind of way. You get what I'm saying, bro? How is that for your mum, getting shot three times when you see her the next time? Do you feel disappointment? Do you feel sad or heartbroken? Or do you still have that mentality where you don't you kind of block it out? Hmm. I'm way more aware now, bro. I'm way more aware now. And you you know, my mum my mum's a lot more ill now. So it's like I know if things will affect affect her differently now. Do you get what I'm saying? I think all, I think us as brothers, yeah, I think we're conscious of that, like proper conscious of that, bro. Like, we didn't, we, we wasn't thinking about that before, bro. Like you, you're literally talking at stages, bro, where every single one of her kids, yo, even my sister, you know, bro. My sister, bro, you believe me if I tell you, my sister's done more jail than me and all my brothers put together. Bro, my sister, bro. Hey. Long story, bro. She's been locked up in multiple countries, this, that, bro. Like, she's, bro, crazy. But at one stage, bro, every single one of us were locked. Do you get what I'm saying? That's just my mom. Do you get what I'm saying, bro? And because I'm locked somewhere else, my brother's locked somewhere else, this, he's, this person's locked there, they're locked there. We ain't together at no point. So everyone's doing their own journey in their mind. Nobody's thinking of the next person's feelings almost, if you get what I'm saying, bro, because each person's going through it. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? When really, it's just some communication that's needed. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of the time, bro, you find when, when you have a family and they're all going through these different things, bro, people rarely get together and sit down and talk about shit, bro. You get what I'm saying? So like, I don't think I really understood how my mom was feeling, bro, until proper recent, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When I've heard my I've heard my mom, whether it's whether we having just certain conversations or even my dad, bro, because my dad, yeah, I think he really expected something completely different for us, bro. You know, to have taken us and brought us over there. He definitely wanted us to have a different life. Yeah. Did he ever blame himself for letting you come back? It's it's totally changed your life. I I I, I, I think so, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I said at the start, it's not really think, like we don't really, maybe we should as well, but we don't really talk about that stuff too tough. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like- um, Do you all have too much pride kind of to discuss that kind of <sighs> rooted trauma from the past? Yeah, I think, I think it's, I think it's, I think that's what it is, bro. I think it's just approaching it, that first approach, you know what I'm saying? Somebody needs to do it, I believe. That's what I'm saying, bro. It's that first approach, like, Everyone thinks that they'd be able to talk about what, you know, this feeling or this thing they've gone through, bro. It's not always as easy as that though, because sometimes when you talk about things, bro, you realize it highlights certain attributes in yourself that you've gained from those experiences. Sometimes you like those things, sometimes you don't, bro. Do you get what I'm saying? But it's reality. And I feel like a lot of the time, bro, people don't like, realizing who they are. You know what I'm saying, bro? Or I feel like people would rather avoid the whole topic altogether, bro. Do you get what I'm saying? Then go into it, then have to deal with certain things like, yo, did you do everything you could at that stage? Like say, I know this is one of the things with my dad, yeah. I know sometimes, like he ain't said it, but I know, bro, that in his mind, I know he wishes he did a bit more though. To even to just kind of push us in a different direction or whatever, you get what I'm saying? Like I know I know at the time he was probably thinking, 
you know, when you got when you got baby mothers and all these things, bro, sometimes things can just cause you bare stress and hassle. I know, I know me having kids now, bro, like I know I can I can look and think to myself, okay, cool. I get I get that angle, yeah. And I know sometimes as a parent you'll think to yourself, you know what, let me step back and just let let them carry on and hopefully when they get a certain age I can then just step in and, you know, kind of take over and make sure they're good as their dad. But bro, that don't work. That that shit doesn't work, bro. Because let me tell you something. If you ain't around from those younger years, bro, you miss out the opportunity for the youth to gain respect for you. If they don't have respect for you, they ain't listening to shit you're saying anyway, bro. You're just another guy. So when he's coming back, when you're 13, 14, you've already made up your decision. So, bro, when he's talking, fam, I'm hearing, even to know now how I was looking at things when he said it to me then, bro. Now, growing up, I feel like, man... (laughs) <laughs> that wasn't the right approach. Like I, I completely didn't give a fuck, bro. He would say something to me, and I'd think, uh, anyway, you know what I'm saying, bro? Like I remember him saying um, about tattoos, and I remember thinking, all right, cool. Well, you don't get a tattoo because I am. You get me? Mm-hmm. Just little things like that, bro. Like, and you don't realize it until after when you have your own kids, and then you realize how that process works. You get what I'm saying? So with my pops, yeah, I reckon. I reckon he would blame himself a little bit. Yeah. So even though when you had the gun, you threw it away, somebody stuck you in, I know you're probably thinking fucking little snitch. But when you look at it from the other side, he could have potentially saved your life because you could have been in prison now for a murder. That's a fact. That's a fact. You know what, bro? And I've had to come to kind of kind of come to terms with that, you know, of how, how, how to look at this. You know what I'm saying, bro? Because... You see, now, yeah, now at this age, you know, I've I've figured out certain other things or avenues to make money or, you know what I'm saying, bro? Like, you, more mature in it. Whether or not you're still capable of certain things, bro, you're thinking of other things too. You get what I'm saying? So, it's like, even though... I would look at someone like that, bro, and I'm like, yo, you fucking piece of shit, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. I can't fucking believe you did that, bro. Like, yeah. brother, you just, you, <laughs> the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Even though I'm looking at it like that, bro, it's like, in my mind, though, it's exactly what you said. Knowing how I was moving, bro, knowing what I was doing, what I did, do you get what I'm saying? Like, it could easily have been that. Do you get what I'm saying? It could easily have been uh, yo, you know, he ain't not not your welcome home gorilla. You know what I'm saying? It would have been, uh, yo, free, free gorilla, man, 10 years later, 15 years later. You know what I'm saying, bro? Mm-hmm. So in that sense, bro, I'm like, you know what? <laughs> you know, you didn't do too bad, you fucking prick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bro? <laughs> yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. But trust me, bro, it's... um. It's it's, it's 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 been a mad journey though, bro. Cause see, my brother, I don't think my brother though, yeah, realizes how much of an influence he's had though, you know. Because you know, really, bro, really, bro. If my bro had me around him, my older brother had me around him, and he said, "Hey, fucking, you're gonna be a cricket player now, bro." And bro, I'd have played cricket, fam. Do you get what I'm saying? You look up to your brother, older brother. Like, bro, I did everything he did. But, uh-huh. but you know what? We spoke about this years later. Though. A reflection of him. Yeah, like, like really, bro, everything I did is like things he did, but like pushed it a bit more. Do you get what I'm saying? So like, even, bro, even me being this size right now, I went gym because I saw my brother go gym. Do you get what I'm saying to you? Like, it's the only difference is I kind of, you know what I mean? You were his shadow. He made music before I made music, bro. He stopped. I just, uh-huh. do you get what I'm saying, bro? Not for the not for the things we do, bro. I watched him do it. Do you get what I'm saying? And then I kind of just took it to another level. Like, you know what? When I saw when my brother was on the road, bro, like doing what he was doing, making his name, bro. You know, I I tell you what, days changed changed everything for me, bro. I've sit, I'm, I'm you know I'm in my I'm in my bedroom, bro, playing with some fucking toys and that. You know what I'm saying? Living in Handsworth. The door the door flies open. My bedroom door, it's my brother. But he's got fucking blood all over him. And this guy's like, yo. He's talking about fucking, he just left his uh, fucking hammer in someone's head, bro. And I'm like, 
But I'm a, I'm a kid with my toys and that like, wait, what? But then I'm seeing this blood all over him, bro. And I, I'm looking in his face, bro. And he looks shocked himself. You get me? And when he's told me what happened and why it happened, I remember thinking, oh yeah, all right, cool. You know, you know what I'm saying, bro? But I don't think that's what you're supposed to be thinking at them ages though. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I literally remember thinking, oh no, that's blessed though, man, because obviously you said he tried that with you first though, right? Oh yeah, and then you fucking put the hammer in his head. All right, cool. You know what I'm saying? And my my mind, bro, it just kept developing like that. You see, my, you see, there's several occasions here where I saw my brother, bro, like get into it with someone. You get me? And it's like what I was saying before. That made me feel like, bro, like, yo, I have to hurry up and step out. And when I'm stepping out, I have to step out, bro, like with seriousness. You get what I'm saying? Now, I know joke things to make anyone feel like, you know, we play games around here. Like, nah, we don't play games. And if you if you mess with anyone that's in this circle, bro, you're going to have an issue. You get what I'm saying? And we always moved like that. You know what I'm saying? You You knew, bro. You do something to this person over here, that's about to be long because it's not just this person, bro. This is, like I said, I come from a big family and it wasn't just a big family, bro. It was like a a big family of many people who was on it though. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like each person individually could be their own fucking character, bro, if you get what I'm saying. And then as a collective, bro, it just looks mad. And you know what, bro? Loads of the times, yeah, we got labeled like, yo, this gang, that gang, when really we, we were just like a bunch of cousins. Do you get what I'm saying, bro? family. Really, we were just a big family, bro. Yeah. But we're like a dominant family on the ends. Do you get what I'm saying? What was it like being in prison when you get the door locked behind you? You get your cell door shut for the first time, down your five, after being stabbed, after being shot. Was there ever a realisation to think, fuck me, my life's going wrong here? Yeah, at one point. But you believe me if I told you though, bro, that when I went to jail, I felt like, I right, it was about time I got in jail. That's the, I remember thinking that, you know, bro. Like, I remember thinking, yeah, it was about time. I weren't upset. Like, I was cool, bro. And then, if anything, I tell, you, I tell you what, there was like a scenario that happened. I think I spoke to my kid. I spoke to my son, yeah? And that's more when being in jail hit home. You know what I'm saying? Like, I spoke to my son. How old your son then? At the time, bro, he was like one. Yeah. And I spoke to him and I remembered, I remember that that hit me. You know what I'm saying? Because I was like, yo. I felt like I failed him. Fuck everyone else. Do you know what I'm saying? I felt like, yo, this kid is here now and he's about to grow up. You know what I'm saying? At this time, I don't know what sentence I'm getting. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm just thinking, yo, psh, I failed this kid. You get me? But um, when I was in there, bro, you know, every time they'd walk past, you know, with the keys, they'd walk past my cell, bro. I was on the I was on the bottom floor at first because I went on to, I was in Winston Green, Joe. So when I got into Winston Green, Joe, bro, I was like, um, I was already a known someone. Do you get me? So when I've gone into the jail, bro, the screws in Winston Green ain't, ain't stupid. They know... Who's who? Who's who and what's going on. You get what I'm saying? They hire a lot more local people than you think, if that makes sense. Yeah. You get me? So they know their ins and outs, bro. So as soon as I got in there, I was cool. And I've gone into the induction wing. You're usually there for a while, like a week or two, but I was only there for a day. You don't want to be on induction wing. It's fucked. You know what I'm saying? So they rightfully so knew to come and just take me straight off there, put me straight onto the new side of the wing. When I got onto that new side of the wing, bro, I'll be honest with you, my jail experience wasn't like many people's though, bro. I, my shit was pretty nice, bro. Yeah. Like, I can honestly say, I, I know that other people, like, and I know, this, this is the thing. Whenever, I, you know, someone goes to jail and they want to look like this someone, they turn around and they're like, yeah, man, I had it like this in jail or it was like this or whatever. And I'm thinking, you know, nine times out of 10, you think to yourself, if you've been in jail before, bro, everybody can't have it like that. Someone's chatting shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, bro? In my case though, Anyone who was locked with me, bro, which would have been lots of people, you get me? They'll tell you the same thing, bro. Like, I've gone in there and um, I had it kind of cushy, bro. Mind you, my brother that's a year older than me was in at the same time as me. 
but he had had no tell a lie he was in jail yeah and then by the time I had gone jail he came out of jail but before I finished my sentence in jail he had gone back in jail so I didn't actually see my brother that's a year older than me for like years bro like straight years fam like three three about eight years did anybody try and test you inside Man, I'll tell you a funny story, bro. Oh, man. So check this out, yeah. Bro, there was a kid, yeah. This geezer was a, this geezer was older than us. He rode with some older man from the ends as well. So even though I didn't know him, because I knew the circle he ran with, and, you know, we had kind of respect for that circle, I knew what circle he ran with. So not that I'm giving him that respect per se, but it's like, you know, that extended respect kind of thing. You know what I mean, bro? So, you know, if you, were, you know, if a man wanted an extra piece of chicken or something, you might be like, all right, go on, do your thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm standing up now. Now, now this is the thing when I was in jail, bro. When I'm in jail, I, I was cool, bro. Like, I was super cool. Just don't take the piss. Other than that, I'm cool, though, innit? You know what I'm saying? You want to borrow something? You know, because I was one of them people where my cell's always nice and I always got shit and CDs or whatever it is, bro. So people would come to borrow shit. So this kid now, bro, Mind you, whenever anyone comes to me, they ask me nice and polite. And then they get the thing. And then, you know, have it for however long you want. And, you know, just return it. Cool. Well, this geezer comes over, bro. I'm standing up and I'm talking to someone. First of all, he interrupts me. So that shit's rude from the beginning. You get me? Then as I'm talking, bro, my man's like, see, he ain't asking me if he can borrow a CD. He's like telling me he's going to come for the CD. You get me? So I'm thinking... Am I hearing this correct? So I think to myself, let me give him the benefit of the doubt. I call him in the cell. I say, yo, um, you know you was just saying this to me like that, bro. Like, that sound sounded mad, you know, fam. You need, like, trust me, because that can come off like, but I'm properly trying to explain myself to this kid. You know, as I'm trying to explain it to them, yo, this guy's getting more and more attitude, bro. And I'm thinking to my head, I'm thinking to myself, what? Like, we're just me and you in a cell, you know, bro. You're giving me more attitude. So this geezer's giving this attitude, and I say, yo, bro, all right, cool. But I explain to him how to ask next time you get me. I go outside, bro. I swear to God, the geezer does the exact same thing again. He does the exact same thing immediately, bro. Man. <laughs> the bro, the the open palm slap I gave this geezer in his face, bro, sent him straight across the landing. And you know, it's funny because he started walking back, bro, like, yo, yo, you know, what was that for? It's like in his mind, though, he couldn't understand, bro, the cheek that you just came with, bro. And I just explained something to you. Then you just come in front of people again, bro. Like, like I'm somebody to be taught to like that in front of everyone. You get what I'm saying? Anyway, my next boy now, though, is fucking, he's, he's fucked him up, bro. But imagine, there was really, bro, in jail, just that occasion and one other occasion, bro. Because my whole, remember what I'm saying to you? My jail time, bro, was very, very smooth, like... I went into jail, bro, knowing to myself, my brother had a hard time because he did shit just long, bro. You know, he just didn't, he didn't do it in the right way, bro. You know, there's a way to move. He did it wrong. You got what I'm saying, bro? So, did, bro, he ended up getting like an extra year on top of his set. He did lo way longer than he was supposed to, bro. You get me? So he fucked up. So I said to myself, I ain't doing that. So I was like gym orderly straight away, bro. Like I was in the gym. I'm fucking, I'm out my cell all the time, bro. Like, I'm able to do what I'm doing, even with the fucking, even with parcels and shit, bro. Like, I'm able to do what I'm doing and maneuver how I want to maneuver because I put myself in a certain position in the jail, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So I could go where I'm going, do what I'm doing, and I had an easy fucking time, mm -hmm. bro. I'll be real with you. What was it like coming out? Were you deciding, okay, I've got a son now, I've missed a few years, it's time to really fucking get my shit together? Or were you thinking, you still have that mentality where you couldn't give a fuck? Coming out, it was a bit different, bro, because I came out with a plan. What was the plan? You get me? I came out with a plan, yeah. It was like, um, it was on some music shit, put the team together, do some stuff, make some moves. And for the most part, that's what happened. Do you get me? But then, um, you know, sometimes, bro, you try to put on the wrong people. Yeah. And they don't appreciate the thing or the sacrifices you just made for them or the money you put into something. So it kind of ended up breaking down. But I've still got it going on because I'm relaunching it now. But at that time when I came out, bro, like, man, I put, I, I, I panned up fast, man. I was, I was down in London all the time. 
working with different artists, this, this, and this. Who have you worked with? You know what, bro? So when I've come out, I've worked with a couple people. You know what, bro? I've worked with fucking uh, psh, Wiley, K Coke. K Coke, shout out to K Coke, legend. Bro, I got, a tr- I got a music video with him right now on have YouTube, you? bro. Yeah. yeah, what is it called? It's called, um, what's it called? K Coke, man. Yeah, Shit, what's it called, bro? Man, I love K Coke. You know what? I can't remember what it's called. Type in both of our names, yeah. bro. It comes up because you know that's what I'm saying, bro. And I linked them, yeah. I did that with him a while ago, bro. Yeah. Like because this is the thing, yeah. A lot of these, you know, people used to look at me as like a musician, a rapper from Broom. But the craziest thing is, bro, I was never like rapping like that. Like I just used to make the tunes and then put them out. So you know, someone might make thirty tunes, forty tunes, and only put out two or whatever. Well, if I made seven, I would put them all out. So even though you've made 30 and I've only done seven, all my seven are out and you've still got yours somewhere. So then it looked like I was putting out more stuff than people than it looked like I was a musician, if that makes mm-hmm. sense, bro. So when I'm coming down and I'm doing these collabs with like k Cole, or like Wiley's in my house, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When I'm doing these things, people are thinking to themselves like, I must be on this mad music journey. When in real life, bro, these are actually just people I know. These are people where I, where I like I know them. So like for example, you just said K Coke, you get know I me? Mean? Shout out Coke and yeah. fucking Big French as well. You get me? My guys. Basically, when he got signed to Rock Nation, bro, uh back in the day, you know, before he got signed, I remember telling people, yo, he's about to get signed, you know. Jay Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is this is the craziest thing, bro. Like, they they got one studio, what was it called? The Chocolate Lab or something like that, down in London. And I used to go there to record with them, with like Joe Black and a couple other men. And when I used to go there now, uh, this one occasion, I didn't go there to record. I just went there to link them and get some mixes done and some shit like that. But there was a geezer, he's told me, yo, come and link him. Um, he's just he's just in a meeting real quick, but I may as well just come link him at the meeting. When I got to the meeting, bro, it was the guy from the fucking label or whatever, bro. And he was talking to him. So imagine I'm there in the meeting, bro. So I hear the numbers that they're saying and the dates and the name of the label. And bro, I'm sitting there thinking, wait, what? I'm thinking, what the fuck am I hearing? Like, you know what I'm saying? But he's talking to the guy all normal. Matter of fact, yo, he's actually putting pressure on the guy, bro. Like the guy's saying numbers to him, bro. I, Coke said, yeah, but the maddest thing is, Red Ted, Ted, you know, they offered this amount. So y'all heard the geezer just like, yo, the geezer's like jumbled up a couple of things. Like, nah, 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 nah. Uh, I'm sure we can figure that back out. Like, so this is why, like, that's not a word of mouth. Like, I was, I saw that, bro. You got what I'm saying? And, you know, it's because of things like this, though, bro, why people would just, they always used to look and think, yo, yeah, man, music guy. You, you know, he does road, but, you know, he's on the music. It was because of shit like that, bro. Like, I'd be there in those type of moments or around certain people. Like, if you go on my Instagram, like, now, bro, like, a couple posts down when I was with, a, when I'm with, like, Burner Boy and, Mr. and all that and we in what Portugal. Your Instagram? You get me? G Rilla 365. Mm-hmm. So even shit like that, bro, like in that picture, you'll see like me, Ross, the one who's got that uh, body tune now with Tian Wayne that's going mm-hmm. crazy. Like we're all there, bro. But it's like I've never I've never just I've never been on it properly, bro. Why? It was only, it was a, because I feel like when I was doing it, bro, like alright then. So check this. My space days, yeah. What would that have been? Two thousand and like six or some shit. Yeah, early like them times, yeah. Out, yeah. So, I made my first tune, bro. I've ma- I've never made music. I made my first tune. This is after I get stabbed. I made my first tune, and it's like a it's like kind of a tune, like you know, saying like yo, you know, I've come back and da 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 all that type of you know shit. I put the video on my MySpace. When I put on my MySpace though, bro, I get DM'd pretty much straight away by one brother called Q Diz from London as well, from South. My man, when he hollers me now, you know, he phones me and straight away, he asked me two, two questions that ain't nothing to do with music, some street shit, like a couple people that we know similar, you know what I'm saying? So once we clarified that, bro, I was like, all right, certified. With, he said to me, yo, can you come down next week? So I was like, all right, cool. So, couple hours go by and he phones me back and he's like yo I fucked that day up can you come now tomorrow and I'm thinking in my head yeah I ain't never met this geezer before I don't know if 
fuck all about any Set of up. this. Bro, I'm, I swear <laughs> down, I'm thinking, yo, this is a bit mad, this is. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we went down there like that as well, bro. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, we went down there, bro, like, ready for that. Do you get what I'm saying? And um, it's funny now when I look back, bro. Yeah, we went down there very ready, bro. And then um, I remember we, we we went to Unit Ten, yeah. And but mind mind you, at the time I don't I've never heard of the studio or nothing at the time, bro. I'm just from Handsworth and I'm from Broom, bro. So I've come down just thinking, yo, Unit Ten, come then, let's go. You get me? Now I've gone there, bro. Mind you, I don't make music all the time like that. I just made this one video. You get what I'm saying? So when I go there now, bro, I'm on the phone to him like, yo, I'm sure I'm here. You know what I'm saying? So he's pulling up in the car, bro. And as he's pulling up, like, yeah, yeah, I see yeah. He's with Giggs. So this is this is when Giggs has that talking the hardest tune out, when yeah. the, the thing that made him blow. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking now, bro, and I'm like, huh? So I immediately take him serious because, wait there, you with Giggs, bro. You get me? You Just you two in the car rolling. So I'm like, mad. He comes out, bro. We're going to the studio. And bro, it's nothing but brand name artists at the time. Like, these artists at that time were the biggest ones. So you had like Gunna D, Cashtastic. You had like Face Squeeze, uh, Joey P from Nuts, Switchblade. You had like um, Youngster at the time. You had fucking... I can't remember all the names that were there, bro. But all these names I'm saying, these were big names at the time, bro. You get what I'm saying? So these, these are people, I used to listen to their music, bro. So I'm just straight away like, huh? Raw. So check check this out. That's why it always just looked like I was in that game. Mm-hmm. Because then, yeah, I would leave from London. I'd go back to Hansworth, bro. I'm back in Hansworth. I'm back on the ends. I'm back doing what I'm doing, bro. And then it would be another couple of days later, a week or two, and I'd get the phone call again come down to London, I'd fly down to London, bro. And then I'd do some more shit. He would introduce me again to some more people. So solid, this man, that, da, 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 da. And I ended up just doing stuff. So every time I'm, I'm coming down, bro, he's putting me with someone else, putting me with someone else. You get what I'm saying? He had one label called uh, Ghetto Superstars. That's where I first knew Stormzy from. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So you must have some talent then to be getting introduced to these cats. Well, that's what I'm saying, bro. Back in the day. So what happened then? Do you know what? I just, bro, I fucking... I just wasn't taking it as serious as these guys. So, so, you know, he used to, and he used to push a lot of us, bro. But one of the people was Stormzy. You know what I'm saying? So Stormzy ends up doing his thing though. But imagine this though. I go to jail in in like 2.13 or something, 2.14. That tune comes out where he's like talking about Big Mikey or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mind you, I'm in jail hearing this. I haven't seen no visual. I'm just hearing this on the radio. So it must be about two fifteen or sixteen now when I'm in I'm in uh, I end up in DCAT. So we're in the dorm and there's a big screen. I think it's the Mobile Awards. So I'm watching this shit now, rooting, because I'm just seeing fucking there's like a couple man from the hood in that. Something I'm thinking, yo, this is crazy, bro. And then he comes on stage, bro, and I'm like, huh? I said, bro, but I'm trying to expect these guys ain't understanding. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to make them know, no, 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 bro. We what the fuck? Like mm-hmm. But then, um, you know, I spoke to Q again when I'm in jail and he's like, yo, trust me, you know, we're going we're gonna to sort some shit out. But mm-hmm. then he ends up getting deported before I even come out. Does that not make you look at things then and think, fuck, could have been me? Of course, bro. Could have made me not be here, but not get shot. At. Because there's another guy here from Liverpool, um, Trems, mm-hmm. yeah? And he's doing his thing, blown as well. He was on the same label, bro. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. There's this couple people, bro, who have gone clear and it was on, it was on, they started on the same thing. The only difference with me, bro, is all that stuff that I was saying, that's really what it was. So like, you know, I wish I could have been one of them kids, bro, where like I'm in studio every day instead. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's not what my life was, bro. It feels as like if you had something to prove. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then, but it's like in my mind or in the background, I knew I had this talent, yeah, but then I'm around people, bro, who, first of all, these people around me ain't pushing my talent. You know what I'm saying? The people who I'm around, yeah. at, first of all, don't give a fuck about my talent, bro. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? They, we just care about what we can do out here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That like that music shit's cool, but you know, 
they don't the see store. the vision of yeah you get what i'm saying yeah, bro yeah, yeah. and to be honest with you it kind of dim my vision too yeah that's it what dim, happens dim but my if you've vision, got bro. focus if you've got vision and you speak it to someone because they can't see the vision they speak you they speak you out your bro. vision and then you go fuck that before bro. you know it, you've been stabbed you've been shot fam you're doing that's, five that is exactly what you happened, look at bro. their lives and their lives are still fucked you know what i'm saying bro because mm -hmm. so, you know you you imagine this bro i was the i was the first guy from broom and like all of these london channels and medias yeah. and all this that's why till this day bro i have good relationships with all these people like link up tv or whoever it is bro yeah. i got good relationships like that guy might be on a million views but i can call his phone though mm -hmm. you can't you know what i'm saying though yeah. because like i really knew these people way beforehand bro you know what i'm saying before they had these companies or these names that are fucking celebrity type now I already knew them. But it shows you how things grow, arms and legs. Do you like, get what I'm saying, just bro? Just with consistency is key. Like, to what, go through the crime ladder. It's just like focusing on something else. The tools and techniques are the exact same. Yeah, It's just yeah. consistency to keep raising the bar and keep pushing and keep believing, which is key to believe. Exactly, That's bro. That's the main key. So going forward with your life then, Gorilla, what's, what's your plans? Well, for me now, bro, the way I see it is like this. I'd be lying yeah, if I said I was, you know, like one of these people where, you know, I go around and I'm trying to, you know, tell everyone, yo, put the knives down, put the guns down, because, you know, a lot of scenarios, bro, they're deeper than that. It's it's, it's deeper than like, you know, you, like I said, you can't just tell, like, bro, if you had a brother that had been killed, you know, I can't tell you, just put that down straight away like that and expect you to go, oh, all right, cool. It's a deeper conversation than that. And each one's individual, you get what I'm saying? So I'd be trying shit if I came out here saying, oh, I'm trying to be one of them guys. I ain't trying to be that, bro. But what I am trying to do though, is, Make people understand me though, who I am. You know what I'm saying, bro? Yeah. And like you said, if a person can hear something, you know, bro, and take something from that and be like, wait there, swear, you did that and then it went left like that. All right, cool. Maybe I can do that a bit different than all. You know what I'm saying, bro? But I don't really have an interest in trying to beat the kids over the head with that stick. Then, you know, that one you hear everybody say, bro, mm -hmm. oh, the kids are fucking stupid. And they don't, you know what I'm saying? Because that ain't the way to go, bro. You need to give the youth respect, first of all. You get what I'm saying? But I feel like it's more beneficial, bro, to come out with a way for them to have some shit to do. You get what I'm saying? To put their focus there, bro, rather than to give lectures 24-7. Yeah. They ain't going to do nothing, bro. Like, I remember how my brain was at that age, bro. Yeah, somebody preaching to you. You get what I'm saying? You tell them to fuck I'd off. I'd heard that shit, bro. And you know the worst thing about it? Most of the people, bro, who go, who, who are like trying to really push that, you don't have no respect in the hood, bro. So your word ain't gonna go anywhere but to those organizations and those other industry people. It's not gonna actually hit the street. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like loads of the time when people are doing that anyway, bro, they have to come at that differently. Cause, yeah. cause otherwise, yeah, if you're a you if you're a kid fam, you're younger, it just comes across disrespectful, mm -hmm. bro. What's all your social media platforms that people can maybe get in contact? So I think everything's the same, you know. My Snap, my Insta. Because, bro, you, you need to bear with me. Yeah? I've only just started fucking. I'm <laughs> properly, bro. Yo, bro. Yeah. So, my Instagram now, yeah, that that's kind of building kind of fast. You get me? I'll leave the links in the description anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, my, my Insta's building fast. Snap and that, I'm just getting used to, bro. Yeah. Like, yo, this idea of walking around, bro, and every second, like, yo, this is what I'm doing. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Psh, that shit seems too deep into my life, yeah. bro. Like, it's a bit, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, G Rilla. 365, you'll get me on all my platforms, bro. Mm -hmm. You get me? Yeah. But I swear down, bro, it's been a it's been a mad journey though, bro. And I'd be lying, yeah, if I said I, I, I'd never be able to put my whole thing into one sitting, bro. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Because even like when I just think of little stories in that, bro, that I could just break down, bro. It would sound like an action film, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying though? It would sound like an action mm -hmm. film, bro. Like, but hopefully though, you know, this is this is a first of many though, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is almost like an introduction mm -hmm. to the rest of shit that I'm gonna yeah. show. There's you no get what I'm saying? Bro? Platform to introduct it, my brother. That's you know what I'm saying, bro? Yeah. For anybody watching it's maybe going through a battle, it's maybe been stabbed, shot, and feel as if they need to get vengeance or retaliate, what advice would you have for them? For anyone that's in the battle, in the life of crime, whatever. You know what, bro? <laughs> You're winning is the best revenge, you know, bro. Like, you know what, bro? 
I, I just say winning is the best, bro. Like you see, you see when you're winning, fam. See when you're winning. See like when you when you put your focus, bro, into just winning, bro. <laughs> you'd be surprised what happens, you know, bro. You know what I'm saying? When you focus on just winning, bro. You know, all those other folks, bro. You'll see them fall off one by one, you know. Anyway, and all that will happen is you've won. Or they're all just falling off anyway, bro. You get what yeah. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, trust me, bro. You don't have to go down the same routes like I went down, bro, to get shit done. Like, trust me. That, I've lived, bro, I'm 31. I feel like I'm fucking, <laughs> bro. 101. <laughs> bro, I've been through so many fucking yeah. battles and that, bro. Like, trust me, bro. Like, when people speak about certain things, even when I hear them describing things, bro, I know the difference between someone who's been through something and who ain't, yeah. bro. Like, I hear them just describing something, bro, I'd be like, all right, that's some real shit. He knows what he's on about. Or you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, bro. There's no way you describe mm-hmm. that like that. You get what I'm saying? But you're clearly here for a reason, Biggie. You're yeah. clearly here for a reason. It's a man of fucking not nine lives, but fucking 59. It's um, <sighs> you're still here for a purpose. Those things, you can then help the youth to then don't make the same mistakes you've done. You then get the success story get in about the music, help mm. people produce music, do whatever you can to show that people can change. And that's the beauty of life, that anybody can change. And this is the thing, man. Me and, um, you know, I was contacted by um, by a friend of mine to start up um, like a management label. You get what I'm saying? And to me, yeah, it makes sense because, you know, the amount of youths and that, that I know on the ends, bro. And these are youths who will listen when I'm talking. You get what I'm saying, bro? But these are some talented fucking youths. You get what I'm saying? Hmm. But, I can see everything happening to them, bro, that happened to me. I can see literally all of their talents, bro, just going down the drain because they're chasing something else. But this thing they're chasing, bro, isn't going to go as they think, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like these wasted opportunities that I'm just seeing left, right, and center, fam. So um, when this kid shouted me the other day, bro, about this, I was like, yo, I'm, I'm down. You know what I'm saying? We saw it now this week, to be fair. But like... I got a new uh, media platform that's being launched, uh, the G Network. You get me? That that have that's gonna that's gonna give loads of opportunity, bro. But see, why is for me though is like I said, it's that opportunities thing, though, bro. It's listening to what I'm saying without me sounding like I'm trying to fucking lecture and tell you I know more about your life than you do, and telling you how to run your shit. I ain't doing that. I'm not. Yeah. I'm, I'm not looking to do that, bro. Mm-hmm. But like you said, if I can break down what I've been through, bro, how I got snaked, how me doing this landed me here, then took away these years, or, you know what I'm saying, bro? Mm-hmm. I feel like that's a better way yeah. to make someone hear something. And do you get what I'm saying? Every time I've heard an interview from someone, bro, where I've, say, looked up to that person or something, it's much easier for me to take the information when I'm just listening to their story. Instead of I'm telling you. You understand uh, me? How do you feel telling your story today? To be fair, bro, I feel like, like I said, this is just an introduction, bro. That's introduction, touched on, touching on a couple of topics. Mm-hmm. My thing, bro, goes much further and much more deeper, bro. You get what I'm saying? Like I said, if I tried to do all of that, bro, in one sitting, it would seem like I was forcing too much into yeah. one thing. You mm-hmm. get me? I guarantee you, bro, the next time I go to sit down with you, bro, mm-hmm. you see, it won't be a case of me having to break down what I've already broken down now. I could just go, I'd be able to just go straight into it. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Of course. Into the nitty gritty, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. So you can see what I'm talking about clearer. Because right now, you know, I, fe- I felt like today it was important to, me- to make even yourself, bro, just understand just, just me. Like how my mind has even started to move, how it does, or how I see scenario. You know what I'm saying, bro? Yeah. So that there's more context to when I'm speaking. Had I had come in, bro, and I just jumped straight into it, it's gonna sound like I'm just gassing and talking yeah. shit. But, when really it's like, yeah. nah, bro, there's a lot of pain to this, bro. Of course, man, but that's where you, the, your success will come if you if you mm. keep pushing through. But for coming on today and telling your story, bro, bro. it's been absolutely been phenomenal. I thoroughly bro. enjoyed that story, come big on, man. Um, you're a good guy. Hopefully, this is, as you say, the introduction of more to come in. I hope to see you everywhere yeah, from yeah, now on. Yeah, but yeah, God yeah. bless you, brother, and thank you. Bro, um, nice, man. Check out more of my podcasts on the right. 
and be sure to like, share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.